Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to analyze another three Canadian REITs or real estate investment trusts, which are popular in Canadian investment communities and help you to invest your money in the best Canadian REITs for monthly passive income in the long run. In the first episode of this series, I analyzed five Canadian REITs, including Granite REIT, RealCan, CapRIT, Keelam REIT, and Northwest Healthcare REIT, and discussed their business and compared their financial statements using my six REITs indicator. In this episode, I will analyze another three REITs in detail. These REITs are Dream Industrial, True North Commercial or TNT REIT, and Smart Centers REIT. If you want to know what is a REIT, their basics, advantages and disadvantages of investing in REITs compared to owning a physical property and to understand how to value the REIT, you can watch my previous video on real estate investment trust. In this video, I'm going to apply my six REITs indicators to these three Canadian REITs and compare the valuation and quality of these stocks so you can make your investment decision easier. My six, my six REIT indicators are especially appropriate for analyzing real estate companies and I explain them in detail in my REIT introduction video, so you may want to watch that video to understand these six REIT indicators better. In summary, these six indicators are price to funds from operation or FFO, net asset value versus market cap of the company, income versus share dilution rate, debt to asset ratio, dividend or distribution history, and finally dividend payout ratio. Now, let's apply these six indicators and also my personal discounted future funds from operation model to these three Canadian REITs, which are popular between Canadian investors. The first real estate investment trust in my list is Dream Industrial REIT, which owns many warehouses in Canada and Europe and also have investments in the United States. And they are very diversified in terms of their tenants. The company HQ is located in Ontario and their shares are traded on TSX, for almost 11.8 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly distribution or dividend with a starting yield of almost 5.5% and the market cap of the company is around 3 billion Canadian dollar. The first indicator is funds from operation. Dream Industrial consistently grew its funds from operation every year and in the last five years, their FFO grew by 27.5% year over year, which is a great growth rate for a REIT. The price to FFO is currently close to 13.6, while their five-year average price to FFO is close to 17, and their sector average is 21.3. So their current price to FFO is lower than its five-year average and sector average, and therefore it seems Dream Industrial right now has a good valuation in terms of their FFO. Now to the second indicator. DreamRIT has a net asset value or NAV of approximately 3.5 billion Canadian dollar and its market cap is close to 3 billion dollar, which means it's slightly undervalued in terms of the second indicator. Now to the third indicator, which is share dilution rate. Dream Industrial consistently dilute unit holders with an exponential rate, like there is no tomorrow, but what is more important is the ratio between cash flow generation and share dilution, which can be found via uh, funds from operation per share growth rate and it seems Dream Industrial FFO per share is basically flat in the last five years which means the share dilution rate and FFO growth was pretty much equal which is not really great for investors as there was no real cash flow generation with all of these share dilutions. The next indicator was their, was their depth to asset ratio which is only 29% and it is a very healthy amount for a REIT. Next indicator is their distribution history, and while Dream has a long history of paying out its distribution, they did not really increase their dividend in the last couple of years, which is definitely because of their flat FFO per share growth rate. They basically were not able to increase their FFO per share to be able to support more dividends in the last few years. Last indicator was the payout ratio, and for Dream Industrial, it is 80.5%, which is good for a REIT, but not really amazing. It means they can use almost 20% of their cash flow to, in, to reinvest in themselves and acquire new properties and continue to grow in the future. Finally, let's quickly look at my personal discounted future funds from operation model. In a bear case or the most negative case for the company, Dream cannot grow its FFO per share in the next 10 years, again, like the previous couple of years. And in the bull case or the best possible case for the company, they can eventually start to grow their FFO per share by 10% in the long term. 
if I give 20% chance to the bear case, 25% chance to the bull case, and 50% chance to the normal case, which is a case between these two scenarios, we can calculate the fair value of this stock based on the formula that I used here. According to my model, if we expect a 10% return year over year in the next 10 years, the fair value of dream industrial stock is around $9 per share, which means compared to the current share price of 11.8, the dream industrial shares are traded at 24% premium. Of course, if your expected rate of return is lower than 10%, for example, if it is close to 8.5%, I think Dream Industrial is already at its fair value and you should buy it today. At the end of the day, it all depends on your expected rate of return. As you can see here, Dream Industrial passed 4 out of 6 REIT indicators that I defined before, which is relatively good, but it was slightly overvalued according to the discounted future earnings model, the discounted future funds from operation model for a 10% return year over year. I should note that Dream Industrial in partnership with GIC recently announced that they have planned to acquire Summit Industrial, another industrial lead via an, via an all cash offer, which can have some impact on the balance sheet and FFO of Dream in the coming quarters, basically after the deal goes through. But as the impact of this transaction on Dream cash flow is unclear at this point, I analyze this sheet with my current information. I will update my valuations again next year after the impact of this acquisition on Dream Balance Sheet is more clear. The second real estate investment trust in my list is True North Commercial or TNT REIT, which is an office-focused Canadian REIT with some reliable tenants, particularly Government of Canada, among their tenants. The company HQ is located at Toronto and the shares are traded on TSX for almost 5.75 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a monthly distribution with a crazy high starting yield of 10.5%. And the market cap of the company is around 541 million Canadian dollar. A lot of investors love this company because of its super high dividend yield, with, which in paper can be great for passive income investors, but let's assess their financial statements against my six REIT indicators. The first indicator is funds from operation. TNT was able to grow its adjusted funds from operation in the last five years by 16% year over year, which is a good growth rate for a rate. The price to FFO is currently close to 9.8, while their five-year average price to FFO is close to 11.5, and their sector average is 9.7. So the price to FFO is lower than their five-year average, but it is similar or slightly higher than its sector average. And therefore, it seems TNT is really close to its fair value in terms of its adjusted funds from operation. Now to the second indicator, TNT has a net asset value of approximately 540 million and its market cap is close to 541 billion, 5 million, which means it is again almost fairly valued, maybe slightly overvalued in terms of the second indicator. Now to the third indicator, which is shared dilution rate. TNT has a history of diluting unit holders, but what is more important is the ratio between cash flow generation and share dilution, which can be found via FFO per share growth rate, and it seems TNT adjusted funds from operation per share is basically flat in the last several years, which means the share dilution rate and FFO growth was pretty much equal, which is not great for investors. The next indicator was their depth to assets ratio, which is 58.7% with an average interest rate of 3.4%. And in my opinion, this is not good at all. It means rising interest rates can impact the balance sheet of TNT in a significant way, particularly due to the fact that they are a small cap rate and don't have access to much capital. Next indicator is their distribution history. And while TNT has a history of paying out its distribution, they did not increase their dividend in the last couple of years, which is definitely because their flat FFO per share growth rate, they basically were not able to increase FFO per share enough to be able to support more dividends in the last few years. Last indicator is the payout ratio, and for TNT, it is close to 100%, which means the distributions or dividend of this company is not safe at all. With the first sign of problem and weakness in the economy, with the first sign of problem with their tenants, TNT has to cut the dividend or dilute unit holders which is a huge risk of investing in this company. Finally, let's look at my personal discounted future funds from operation model. In the bear case or the most negative case for the company, 
TNT not only cannot grow its FFO per share in the next 10 years, again, like the previous couple of years, it will also lose some of its cash flow. And in the bull case or the best possible case for the company, they can eventually start to grow their FFO per share by 7% in the long term. If I give 25% chance to the bear case, 25% chance to the bull case, and 50% chance to the normal case, which is a case between these two scenarios, we can calculate the fair value of this stock. According to my model, if we expect 10% return year over year in the next 10 years, the fair value of TNT stock is around $3 per share, which means compared to the current share price of $6, of almost $6, the TNT shares are traded at almost 50% premium. So as you can see here, TNT passed zero out of six indicators. It did not pass even one of my REIT indicators here, which I defined before, and it was significantly overvalued according to discounted future FFO model. I would personally avoid investing in TNT at this point, as it is extremely risky, even with a tempting 10% dividend yield of this REIT, I believe the dividend can be cut easily with the first sign of weakness in their tenants' ability to pay the rent, as they have no margin of safety for dividend payout here. If you're fine with the risks that I mentioned here, and if you really, you really want a high yield dividend stock for monthly payout, then yeah, maybe consider TNT. The last real estate investment trust in my list is a Smart Centers REIT. Smart Centers owns and develops connected mixed-use communities on its existing retail properties. The current development plan consists of rental apartments, condos, senior residences, and hot hotels to be developed under a Smart Center retail footprint, including retail office and storage facilities. The company HQ is located at Ontario, and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 27 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay monthly distribution with a starting yield of 6.9% and the market cap of the company is around 4.6 billion Canadian dollar. The first indicator is funds from operation or I should say adjusted funds from operation for smart centers. Smart centers barely grew its adjusted FFO in the last five years, which is not really great. Their price to FFO is currently close to 11.8, while their five-year average price to FFO is close to 12.8 and their sector average is 13.8. So their pr price to FFO is slightly lower than its five-year average and sector average, and therefore it seems Smart Centers is slightly undervalued in terms of its funds from operation. Now to the second indicator. Smart Centers had a net, net asset value or NAV of approximately 4.8 billion Canadian dollar, and its market cap is close to 4.6 billion Canadian dollar, which means it is slightly undervalued or I should better say it's fairly valued in terms of the net asset value. Now, the third indicator was its share dilution rate. Smart centers did not really dilute unit holders in the past, which is great for a REIT, but what is more important is the ratio between cash flow generation and share dilution, which can be found via FFO per share growth rate. And it seems smart centers FFO per share is almost flat, was almost flat in the last five years. I still like the fact that they did not dilute unit holders, but it was flat. The next indicator is their depth to asset ratio, which is 43.5%. It's not really high for a REIT, but uh, I still don't like it, especially with an average interest rate of 3.6%. Next indicator is their distribution history, and while the Smart Center has a long history of paying out its distribution, their dividend is almost flat in the last five years with with slight increase in three and four years ago. Last indicator was their payout ratio, and for smart centers, it is 81.1%, which is okay for a REIT, but not really amazing. It means they can use only 19% of their cash flow to reinvest in themselves and acquire new properties and continue to grow in the future. Finally, let's quickly look at my personal discounted future FFO model in the bear case or the most negative case for the company. Basically, they cannot grow their FFO per share in the next 10 years. And in the bull case or best possible case for the company, they can eventually start to grow their FFO per share by 8% in the long term. If I give 25% chance to the bear case, 25% chance to the bull case, and 50% chance to a normal case, which is a case between these two scenarios, we can calculate the fair value of this stock. According to my model, if we expect a 10% return year over year in the next 10 years, the fair value of a smart center stock is around 
Canadian per share, which means compared to the current share price of almost $27, Smart Center shares are traded at 43% premium. Of course, if your expected rate of return is lower than 10%, for example, if you expect 7% return year over year on your money, I think a smart center is already at its fair value and you should buy it today. At the end of the day, it all depends on your expected rate of return. But for 10%, it is overvalued. As you can see here, a smart center's rate only passed three out of six rate indicators that I defined before, and it was overvalued according to discounted future FFO model for 10% return year over year. I think if you don't look for growth and if you're happy with seven or 8% year over year return, and if you want only a monthly passive income, basically, Smart Center can be a good choice for you at this point. There you are, guys. Uh, this was my detailed analysis of three Canadian REITs, which are popular between Canadian investors. If you want to see the third episode of this series, drop a comment and let me know which REIT you want me to review next and which REIT you want to see next. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button so this video can reach a wider audience. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Farewell.